In this video, learn level two strategies every day trader must know taught by a prop trader. Hi, I'm Mike Bellafiori, co-founder of SMB Capital and we're a proprietary trading firm located in Midtown Manhattan. And I'm also the author of the trading classic, One Good Trade and the playbook. Let's get to work on sharing these important trading lessons so you can grow your trading account. My name is Ryan. I'm a junior trader here at SMB Capital. Um, today I'm going to go over a way to scalp around your position, build into a nice core size um, as a way to build up cash flow while you're looking to execute a larger, larger idea trade. Um, so for example, I'm going to show you a trade in Apple. The idea is Apple had a really weak close the previous day, had a strong gap up with the overall market. And the idea is that I'm looking to build into a long position as the stock builds its opening range on the day, looking to build some cash flow, selling out into some up wicks, building back into my position when it retraces back down, eventually looking to solidify my core for a larger up move back towards the previous day's highs. So the context for the trade is Apple was trading roughly around 117 on the open, and I'm expecting there would be some sort sort of pull back down towards 115, 115.50. Um, any type of down moves given the overall context of the market, I'm going to be really interested in looking to try and buy into a core. Um, and given the fact that I'm not expecting us to have some really crazy opening drive to the upside, just given the fact that we have to digest the previous day's move and we really need to see some actual strength come in to bring this stock off the lows. Um, and you also need to see some strength from the overall market coming in, the queues, for example. Until I see that, I'm not going to be comfortable holding all of my size. And that's when the strategy of reading the tape and using the tape to your advantage in order to scalp out and build up cash flow so that your overall risk and average price gets better, um, that's when that really comes in handy. Right off the open, we get a really quick move up to 117.76 and then a quick rejection down. As soon as we start coming down into the 11630, 11640 area, I'm starting to initialize my position. So I'm watching the tape here. I'm seeing it be a little bit heavy as it comes down towards 116. You can kind of see it stall, then it rebids back up towards the 30s. I added one lot, two lots, kind of looking to hold maybe a two lot position, but willing to get all the way up to five lots. Hasn't given up 116 yet. Just kind of stalling here. This is the opening wick down. Added up to a third lot as it continues to hold into this 30 cent area. And we're still kind of stalling here, right? So as I pause the video, the biggest thing I'm thinking about here is I'm in three lots in my position. I'm interested in getting potentially up to five lots and scaling out any move back up towards 117. If 116 drops, I'm going to have to be really careful with the way I scale in to have any further ads because there's a potential that we completely wick down underneath this pre-market consolidation, we take out 115, and then I'm underwater trying to catch a falling knife on a day when, you know, if you look at the 15-minute chart, Apple's relatively weak, hit a five-day low, and now is gapping up back into the range, kind of the breakdown period from midday the previous day. So I really need to be careful here. I really need to make sure that if I think that the market and the queues and Apple are going to bottom, that opening drive or any type of retracement from an opening move lower, I really need to be quick to scalp out my risk until I can build into a core where Apple proves itself, says it's gonna stay up, and then potentially we get that opening move higher. If you wanna learn three real world setups that our traders use, including the simple setup that we teach all of our new traders and the setup that turned one of our traders into a seven figure big money earner, check out the free webinar that we're currently running. Just go ahead and click the link that should be appearing right now at the top right hand corner of your screen. That's gonna open up this free registration page in the new window. So don't worry, you're not gonna lose this video. You're gonna learn more in a couple of hours from this trading workshop than from years of online education. So I'm watching 116 really carefully here, holds nicely. My average price is 
roughly at 41 cents now, so it's a little higher than I would have liked. It would have liked to be closer to 20s, but obviously the stock's moving very quick. We get an interesting upside wick there. I think that's a late print up at 118, but we did spike up to 117. It was too quick for me to take any profit. I don't want to just hit the spread. But now I'm starting to think, okay, any move back up towards 117, I'm going to be really interested in taking off some of my size. So I'm layering out some offers to see whether or not it's going to get up there. A little wick back down towards 116, but it's not breaking yet. Still digesting this little opening move lower. You can see it's definitely very sticky around the 20 to 30 cent area. And by sticky, I mean when the stock comes down to that price, it kind of sits there for maybe a half a second and then pushes back up towards the top of the range, 50, 60 cent area. Average price still 40 cents. A little bit of size came in on the 40s. In a stock like Apple, I'm not really too interested in watching size get stacked on the offers unless it's a, some type of key technical level or a whole number. So I'm still hanging in there. Added up to another lot. So now I'm in four lots total. Looking to scalp out probably one or two lots as we push up towards 117. So now I'm thinking if we break above like 60 cents, I'm expecting to get that upside wick that can cover a little bit of my risk. Pausing here. Get above 60 cents very quickly into the 70s, watching how it comes into 117, thinking it might possibly break. But any quick failures here, I'm definitely going to take off two lots. Took one lot off there. Kind of flicking around. If we get back up into the 80s, I'm thinking I'm just going to take off that other lot. Took it off right there. So now I'm back into my two lot core. Average price, 116.40, but I just took off 40 cents of risk. So now if we drop 116, I'm in a little bit of a better position to potentially work that down. Essentially, you can think about it as my average price is now 116, which is the area that I'm wondering if we drop out from there and we hold 115, I'm going to be scaling into that again. So lo and behold, we're still spending some time here. I haven't touched it. Haven't touched it. Dips back into the 40s. I put on another lot. Now I'm up to three lots. Again, my average price is technically probably somewhere around 116.20 at this point. But on paper, my average price is 48 cents. We got to move back into the 80s. Layer out an offer. Not sure if this offer gets taken. I move my offer down a little bit just because I can see, kind of feel momentum slowing here. You can see we're having a really hard time getting and holding above 80 cents, which is kind of the top of this range. You know, you can think about this as being kind of a shelf right here, kind of 117. No reason to add a momentum lot or add another lot and not take it out when you get 40 cents on it. So now I'm still kind of hanging out. My average price has moved up to 50 cents, but that's okay because I've now taken three lots off for a 50 cent profit. 40 to 50 cent profit. And now I'm just waiting to see. We got to break over 117. Potentially, I'll add a, another momentum lot. And if we flush 116, I'll have a trade decision to make. I want to see how that flush happens. I want to see where the cues are at that time. 
And if that flush looks like something that's potentially viable, I'll look to work into a five lot maximum. Again, scaling out into any moves in my favor. So we get the 116 flush, move all the way down to 80 cents. I haven't done anything yet. I'm looking to see how this, moves to, this move develops. Sorry, I'll rewind that a little bit. Now any push towards 115.50, I'm going to slowly look to add some lots. Got up to a third lot right there. So I'm using this entire base consolidation as a little bit of help, a little bit of support as we flush lower. I got another lot there in the 40s. The ultimate stop on this is if this entire consolidation breaks, I'm going to take the loss. I'll probably lose a point on it. But if I lose a point on three, four, five lots, and I made half a point on three lots, you know, the risk reward ends up being a little bit better than just taking a full stop on that entire full lot size. Usually in these situations, if you take a full size loss on those, you're going to feel a little bit worse if you don't have any cash flow built up. If you're developing and you're not yet there where you can read the tape and you're still trying to learn the way to flow with a stock, my suggestion would be pick your niche, whatever your niche is. Let's say you trade low floats. Let's say you trade the market. Let's say you trade high beta stocks. Pick one that you can get a feeling for, that you have some success with. Trade it on paper. Watch how the tape develops. Apple will very often dip down to these levels, kind of take out little wick consolidations. It kind of trades like spy in that way. It's not going to hold levels very clearly. You need to see how it behaves around those areas. It'll very often rebid after a wick out, a little bit of a stop run. You can kind of see it stop runs this area, stop runs this area, very quickly rebids above 50 cents. So at this point, I'm in four lots. I'm very close to adding my fifth lot. And any move back above 116, I'm going to take that 50 to 60 cents back up towards my average price because if my core is from 116, two lots, and I have five lots down now where I'm adding in the 50s, the 40s, the 60s of 115, tossing those out back above 116, I'm consistently moving my average price lower and lower and lower while also adding cash flow on these little wiggles. So now I'm back up to full size, all five lots. Any of these moves above 116, I'm going to take an opportunity to take some off. We get a really nice retracement pop right up to the 116.30s, and you can see me aggressively taking size off. Got literally all the way right back to my core because I just got a point on the scalp. So now I have a point that I just made on three lots. I've made 40 cents on three lots before, so now you can do the math on that pretty easily. I'm now, basically I've made myself two points on a trade where the idea hasn't even played out yet. The idea on this day is for this swing high from the previous day to be taken out and for us to potentially gap fill from that day before. So in a scenario like that, I'm targeting 119, I'm targeting 120 for SPY, or I'm sorry, for Apple, and we literally haven't even moved out of the pre-market range. But here I am, already sitting in the money, up about two points on two lots. So effectively, I've moved my average price all the way down to 114. You don't have to think about it that way. You can think about it as having cash flow, still risk the right opportunities, you know, you don't want to say, oh, my, my average price is 114, so I'm just going to take this all the way down if Apple completely fails. The stop on this trade is still 115, and you still have to be really careful with that. So now that I'm sitting in my core, the next trade decision is if, if Apple pulls back and we get a little bit of a move to the downside, do we put in a higher low? And what does that higher low look like? So it was being a little bit aggressive here as it's holding this 116.30 area, kind of the level where you saw me scaling in before. But in my mind, I know that if this drops 116, I'm going to have to puke potentially everything because I, I'm also watching the cues. I don't want the cues to fail from VWAP. And I know I can always get back in and restart. Like I said, I've already built up a decent amount of cash flow in the trade. The idea is not invalidated unless 115 gets broken, and I can always get back in.
So now I'm sitting in, I actually got up to six lots on this one. You kind of see we're, we're still spending some time above 116 here, 116 30s. Skipped ahead a little bit. So as you see a really nice compression here, there's two things that can happen. We can either break to the upside and get to 117, where again I'm going to scale all the way back down to my core, or we drop out 116 and I have to see whether or not we make a higher low. That move can happen kind of violently, and if it happens really violently, I might just sell it all and reset and see if these bids step in. So very quickly we get back into the 80s and the 70s. I'm sitting in this position. I'm all the way up to six lots, so I have to be really careful here. Any move underneath like 60 or 70 cents, I'm more than likely just gonna get out, reset, maybe be somewhere around flat on the overall idea, but I'm still not sure about whether or not Apple's really gonna have what it takes to make this larger context move that I'm interested in. So I'm looking to be flexible, I'm looking to be nimble, I'm looking to stay involved in the trade. So if this wick right here doesn't stay and we get some type of flush into the 50s, I'm more than likely gonna have to exit. We get that flush, I quickly get out, I wanna make sure the low of the day at 26 cents doesn't get taken out. If it doesn't get taken out, I can get back in. They barely hold it there. We start to rebid, get back into the 60s and 70s, and now I'm reinitializing my position. I'm about flat on the overall trade, but I now I know the real risk is definitely 115. If 115 gets taken out, I think the trade idea is invalidated, but now I have some levels to work against. I've gotten a feel for the way that the tape's flowing. I'm not necessarily just sitting flat-footed, riding this down. You know, I still think the idea is valid. So as we're kind of stalling here on the tape, I worked up and in, back into a core. So now I have a core from 64 cents. The stop on the day is 115, about a 60 cent risk on my, on my core. So any 40, 50 cent increments I get on any ads, I'm gonna be quickly taking off. So I'm all the way up to four lots now. Any wick above 116, I'm gonna likely take. We get the push back up towards 116. Kind of the previous failure point of that consolidation is right here. So any thrust up into the 20s, I'm likely gonna take off and get all the way back down to my core. Get the push here, I wanna see how it behaves. All the way up to my fifth lot. So now I'm watching really carefully here to make sure we're not getting some type of wedge breakdown. I'm all the way up back into six lots here, so if we do flush 50 cents, I'm gonna have to be really quick to get out. I can't afford to watch this go all the way under 115 full size. My average price is all the way down to 115.80 now. So I'm still in the money, 20 cents or so, in a relatively decent spot. Any moves above 30 cents, I think are gonna be great opportunities for me to scale out. Again, six lots. My core size is two lots. If you know your core size ahead of time, it's very easy to know when you're a little bit too heavy, when you're a little bit too light, and you can use those opportunities to take advantage of the way the tape is wiggling before you get some big momentum break. Nice move to 40 cents or so. Doing a good job holding this, thinking we can potentially break this little swing high right here. Now I'm thinking 116.50 gets broken, I'm gonna try and scale all the way back down to my core. Two lots off right there, previous failure point. 117, a little bit of a psych level on the day. Down to three lots. And on that 117 break, I get down to my two lots. So now, 
I've worked my way into a core of 200 shares. My price is 116 again. I know the real stop on the day is now low of day, 115.26, about 80 cents stop, but I just got a point on four lots and I'm in a two lot size. So you can make the argument, why aren't you holding all of your size for the bigger move? Why are you get, being so quick in and out? You know, are you paying all these fees? Are you doing this or that? The moral of the story is the idea is never invalidated. The idea that I can find better areas to risk against, better areas to build into a, a very solid core and then let the stock work and capitalize on these wiggles by using my tape reading skills. It's perfectly okay to just pick a level to risk off, put your size on and size in, but as you get a little bit more sophisticated with your tape reading abilities, you can build up cash flow so that if you are wrong on a trade and the overall idea ends up stopping you out, you could have still even made money on the process. So like you saw, when I got wicked underneath on six lots, so I had six lots and I we moved all the way back down to 115.60. Even on this move right here, when I was in six lots, I wasn't even down on the position. I was probably pretty close to flat. So my head was still in a great space. When they made a higher low, I was able to scale back in, and then I very quickly got a point and a half on that move and established into a very nice core. And then from there, Apple ends up just consolidating, kind of wedging the rest of the session. I was working my way in, kind of doing the same thing. You know, stopping out when I didn't have enough, or stopping out when I had too much and it went too far against me, getting back in, building into a solid core. What you'll see ends up playing out this right here, this compression, this is a 15 minute chart. Throughout this entire compression, I've been building in, building in, building in, taking off. And then we start to get a really nice sit, 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 sit. You see for 15, 30, 45, an hour, an hour 15, we stay in probably about a 50 cent band. Once that band breaks to the upside towards 119, you start to see Apple curl up a little bit. It's around one o'clock. It's not the best time to think that you're gonna really get some type of momentum break. We barely stop out anyone short from the top of this wick from the previous session, scale out into those moves. You can kind of see this is all, this is me being very active, very active, scaling out, very active, very active. This is everything you just saw in the video. Then we start to compress. I buy a little more, buy a little more, buy a little more. We get the momentum break that you guys saw. I sell out into that and then just kind of ride it into the potential highs. So again, that's a great way to use your tape reading skills, to build into a core, get some cash flow to manage your risk properly and eventually have a really nice size position for a much larger move. Hey, go ahead and click our subscribe button so you don't miss any of the videos they are producing for you in the trading community. And please take the time to add your feedback in the comment section for what videos you'd like for us to produce next and what you found helpful from this video from all of us at SMB, train and trade well.